Hello and welcome to APCSA Unit 3 Lesson 3 For Loops. All right, today we're going to talk about for loops. Let's first go over the three parts that make up a for loop. So the first part is declaring and initializing a loop control variable. So we did this with while loops. We usually called it index or i. In this case, as we see in this example, we could call it number. It can have whatever name you want, but this is ran only once when the loop begins. Uh, before evaluating the condition or running any of the code in the loop, this is created. The second part of our for loop is the condition, just like a while loop. It's a condition that must be true to continue running the loop. So this is exactly like our while loops from before. So this one says while number is less than 5, it'll loop. And then if that condition is true, the loop will run. After the loop is done running, and only after the loop is done running, we have changing the loop control variable. In this case, it says number plus plus. That increments the variable number by one. This is done after the body of the loop is executed, but before evaluating the condition again. You could uh, imagine this as the last line of the loop, essentially. So now that we've gone over all the parts of our for loop, let's take a look at the lesson in code.org and let's convert a while loop to a for loop. And you can see that they, they do the same thing. Okay, so. First, let's read our code here on the level. This is level two, by the way, of lesson three. So let's read the code, see what's going on, and then make our changes to convert a while loop to a for loop. So in our main method here, we can see that we're instantiating a n integer array called numbers, and we're giving it specific values, this initializing list of values 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Then we are creating an array printer object that takes in to its constructor an integer array called numbers. So let's go ahead and take a look at the array printer class. So as we could see, it has an instance variable called numbers that is an integer array. The constructor takes in an integer array and assigns it to that instance variable. So essentially when we create this object, it's going to have this array 246810 as its instance variable numbers. We then can see we have an accessor method, get numbers array. We then have a method that returns a string containing the values of all the numbers in the array. And that method's called get numbers. And you'll note that we can then call that down here in line eight to print out all the numbers in the array. So. You'll note that this is set up just like our last lesson, where we have a resulting string starting out as empty. We have it, a loop control variable called index that starts at zero. And while index is less than the length of the array, we're going to loop concatenating onto that result string whatever value is in the array at that index and a space. We'll then increment the index control variable and then return the resulting string. So let's take a look. How are we going to convert this to a for loop instead? So what we're first going to do, let's just take this. And if you didn't know, if you highlight all uh, of some code on code.org, Java Lab, uh, if you press Control or Command if you're on a Mac, and press the forward slash button that you would usually do, uh, it'll comment out all those lines of code for you. 
And if you do it again, it'll actually uncomment them as well. So a little fast cheat there. So let's uh, keep this just so we could reference it in creating our for loop. So our for loops are always going to be set up the same way. We type for, and you'll know I like to type my parentheses and curly braces first to make sure I don't mess up any syntax. And then the first bit of our for loop, as we saw before, is going to be creating this control loop variable. And we could call it whatever we want. I'm going to keep it the same as what we had up above. So I'm going to create an integer index and initialize it with the value 0. And then note, we put a semicolon here because this is a command that will run at the very beginning of the loop. Then we write our condition. This is going to be identical to our while loop as long as the index is less than the length of our array that's called numbers then our loop will run just like before and we put another semicolon and last but not least our increment this index plus plus that increases the variable index by one we'll type that in here Note that we don't need the semicolon at the end of this because uh, the computer knows that the for loops uh, conditions are ending because of the parentheses. So now our for loop is set up. Note what it has in it. It has the initialization of this variable, the condition, and the increment. So it has most of it there. All now we need to do is put in what we want to run. And there it is, that we're going to concatenate onto that result string whatever the value is at that index. Note that it says index here because that's the name of my loop control variable. And, and let's see if we get the same result uh, as before. So let's just double check. So let's comment out our for loop. Let's uncomment our while loop and let's run the code, see what we get. And then we'll switch these and verify that we get the same result. So let's check. It should print out 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 with a space in between them. Let's verify. There it is, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And now let's switch the while loop to our for loop. We'll comment out this while loop. And we will uncomment our for loop. And we'll run our program again. And there you have it, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, with a space in between each number, exactly like before. All right, so that's uh, the conversion between a while loop and a for loop. And we can see how uh, this traversal, this loop that traverses and goes through every item in an array, how we can write that a little bit faster and more concise with a for loop instead. All right, now your job's going to be to go to level three in a choice level, pick one of the four options. And when you're done with that level, make your way to level four, where you're going to have to do a code review with someone else in class. Hope you have a good day.